Hello everybody and welcome back to Blue Jay Acres. My name is Noelle. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully you decide to stick around, give a thumbs up, and subscribe if you haven't already. So today we are going to do a full day of meals. So pretty much though it's just going to consist of brunch and dinner. So let's go on and get started. We're going to start off with some brunch. All right, so here I'm just going to start with my pan, heating up some oil, and then we're going to make kind of like a breakfast bowl. I'm kind of wanting sausage gravy, but not really feeling like making biscuits. So we're going to use fried potatoes instead. All right, now this is nice and hot. I'm going to add my potatoes. I just diced them small so they'll quick cook nice and fast. I'm going to break those bits. I've got one more I'm adding. I find with my crew I can never make enough fried potatoes and eggs. So that's why we're going to add some sausage gravy to this as well. So it'll be just this nice, wonderful breakfast bowl. I'm going to coat this with the oil. I'm going to turn my heat down some because it's wanting to stick a little bit. While this is cooking, I'm going to dice an onion. And then we're going to start frying up our sausage to make our sausage gravy. Alright, I'm also going to go on and add some salt and some pepper here. And if you wanted to add cheese to this breakfast bowl, you could. I am not. It's, I think it's got enough going on. But I know if you do like a KFC bowl or something like that, they always have cheese in it. I think that would be good if you're that kind of person. I'm kind of cheese lover. All right, again, I'm just going to give this a quick little stir. Let's lose the thumb. All right, basically I'm just gonna let this sit and do its thing while we move on to the sausage. To make my sausage gravy, I'm just gonna do a half a pound because the other half a pound, I am gonna turn into uh, sausage patties for Theo because he's not gonna really do the sausage gravy, but he will definitely do the potatoes and eggs and the um, sausage patties. And some of the other girls love sausage, so. That should be good. And I'm gonna bump this heat up so this will start cooking good. And then breakfast is almost done. It comes together pretty quick. Way, way faster than making biscuits, I feel like. Just, I don't know. You don't got all the cleanup afterwards. It's a little bit less messy. We love our biscuits too, but they would love this as well. I'm just this is getting cooked through. Over here, I'm just gonna stir these potatoes again. This can see over here. A little stir. all those little bits off the bottom if you can. They're delicious. Now you can see, hopefully, that this is getting all done. 
And this is how I make sausage gravy. It's so, so easy. To this, I'm gonna add just some white flour right on top of all that cooked sausage. Also gonna add a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. I'm gonna stir this. I got a little bit of flour back there. I'm gonna stir this and just let this flour cook on this uh, sausage. And just so it doesn't have like a raw flour taste because that's kind of gross. You just want it to have a cooked through taste. So that's it. We're just gonna let that sit and cook for just a few minutes. Just give it a stir here and there so that it's switching around when it's cooking. All right, so now this is all cooked. We're gonna add our milk. And it takes quite a bit. So you just wanna add the milk and stir it, and that's it. This will all thicken up nicely. You'll try it, see if you need to add any more um, salt. I'm sure I'll need more pepper, so I'm gonna go on and just add a little bit more pepper now. And this will thicken up beautifully. I might need to add a little bit more um, milk, but that's it. That's how easy this is. So now back over here, I'm going to add some onion to this. And just stir that in, let it cook for just a few minutes. And then we're going to add our eggs. I'm going to add a little more salt. Just a tad bit more olive oil and I'm going to cover them to cook just a little bit longer. They're still a little bit undercooked. And then our gravy, we're going to just stir this really good over here. Waiting for this to thicken up. While that's going, I'm going to put a bunch of eggs in here. We're going to use probably about 14 eggs. I am feeding seven people, so about 14 eggs. I'm going to mix them up. I can get about eight eggs in this bowl. I'm going to go on and mix them up. Okay, I'm going to go on and stir this again, making sure just that it's not going to stick. And then we'll go back one more time over here. One more quick stir. Then you can do your eggs separate if you want, but I'm gonna add ours to it. This is how we like to do it. I'm just going to add this extra seven eggs. Make sure the eggs are all broke up. And then we just kind of stir that up. This is how my husband, he just grew up eating like this, so he's the one who introduced us to doing potatoes and eggs this way. We thought it was so weird. And now everybody loves it. gonna let these eggs cook. I'm gonna add just a little bit more salt and pepper. And over here, I gotta definitely stir this gravy and turn the heat down a little bit. It's boiling like crazy. Let this get good and thick. Here. 
the other thing that my husband puts on top of this that he grew up eating is ketchup. Then you put ketchup on top of the potatoes and eggs, but we're doing gravy instead today. I just spread that out and let that cook all the way through. Again, just keep stirring your gravy. This will thicken up. If you need, sprinkle a little more flour in, you can. Or if it's too thick, you add a little more milk. But just let it cook for just a little while. And these are ready to get. All right, I'm going to turn the heat off this one now because that looks pretty perfect. I'm going to top this with some green onion. And then back to our gravy. We're just waiting on this to finish thickening up and we're done. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna do it like this. I only am doing three plates because I figure at least three people eat it the way I wanna serve it. Patience, patience. Charles is ready to go. Stop. Oh, I got a mess on the counter. He's hungry. And then I'm going to top it the gravy. As the gravy sits, it'll get even thicker. Again, everything is by preference. What you do or don't like. And then I'm just serving this with some grapes. Charles is going to do a taste test, but here you go. You can see. Yummy, yummy. The girls are in the middle of finals, or I'd have them taste test for you guys. And oh, oh. Ronnie's at school. Kate's up with the boys. So sad for me. So sad for me. It's a little different than the way I grew up on it. Yes, yeah, so I did it with gravy instead. I don't think stuff. there is a way you can make this bad. <laughs> It's different because I didn't feel like making biscuits. What's the verdict? Have I ruined your potatoes? Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Sausage and gravy is great. I think it all goes together really well. I think I would still eat it with ketchup because that's just kind of the way I grew up. But I think this is a great... Like all in one bowl. I mean, I put it on a plate. But if you put it in a bowl, and you, you know, don't feel like making biscuits. I'm going to sound like a broken record, but I could even see it because of the way this is cubed up. I want a tortilla. I <laughs> knew and that was make coming. make a breakfast burrito uh, <laughs> with the sausage gravy on the side. You could. So you can cut it out. Oh, up and, and dip, dip it. Yeah. Well, that would Honestly, be clever. I that would be a, a really clever breakfast. So, I mean, it tastes fantastic. Like I said, I don't think there's a wrong way. For fried potatoes and eggs. For fried potatoes and eggs. <laughs> All right, we're going to go do breakfast. All right, now we're going to go on and jump into um, some dinner. So let's go on and get this started. We're going to do some Asian-style meatballs, some rice, and some veggies. So here's how you're going to make these meatballs. All right, I am going to be making a double batch of this because I want to put some in the freezer for my mother. I do take my ring off whenever I'm making meatballs, if you guys have ever seen me make them you see I don't have a ring on and um, that's why but anyway we're gonna start off with some fresh ginger I'm gonna do about two teaspoons in here now in the description box down below I'm gonna have just regular um, 
measurements for you for a single batch. And if you don't copy the recipe down below or click on it to print it out, then just know that you just do half of whatever I'm saying. So fresh ginger smells amazing. In this kind of thing, I think it makes a big difference than using ground ginger. But if you do not have fresh ginger, you can definitely just use ground ginger. And down here, it's a bit bigger. for a tablespoon of cornstarch. Now, I do not have cornstarch, so I'm gonna do two tablespoons of tapioca starch. If you have cornstarch, use cornstarch if you want. You could also use potato starch or tapioca starch. I'm gonna do about six cloves of garlic. It's what you would do. I'm making a double batch, but I'm just going to use what's left in this jar. I don't want to open another jar just for this. Then we're going to do four teaspoons of brown sugar. Now I am just using raw cane sugar, which has like a molasses already in it because it never stripped away the natural molasses. But because it's thicker, uh, I'm going to do a couple extra. You would not do that if you were doing brown sugar. It's just this isn't ground as fine, so you can't pack it in like you can brown sugar. And you're not going to get that same sweet by just doing four. I have found. And then it calls for a teaspoon of five spice. Um, Jeff, or, I'm sorry, five spice powder. A, um, like a Chinese five spice. I only have the Japanese seven spice. It smells so good. So I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna do one teaspoon for the whole thing. It calls for uh, two teaspoons for this batch, but I don't wanna overpower it, so I'm just doing that. Then we're just gonna add a little bit of pepper. And we wanna make these into smaller meatballs. I already got some rice going in my rice cooker. And we're just gonna mix this all together. So different than the American meatballs because there is no, uh, well ours anyway, we usually do some kind of cheese and we do breadcrumbs and we do um, egg a little bit of milk usually, and onion. So this is definitely gonna have a different taste, different kick. And then we're gonna make a sauce to go with it. Nice, delicious sauce. All right, this is ready. So over here I have my pan going. I'm just gonna heat up some oil in here. And then we'll start doing just small batches of these little meatballs. I'm just gonna keep them kind of small. I'll try not to overcrowd my pan. And then over here, I've got my casserole dish ready to go to put these in after I've browned them nice. And then we're gonna make a sauce to go over top and pop them in the middle. Let's
if you don't want to cook them in the oven, which I just like to do, I just find it easier. And uh, then I know my pork is cooked all the way nice. Um, you can just continue to do it and put the sauce on over top of the stove here. But again, I like to just put mine in the in the oven. So once they're pretty brown, I'm gonna just drop them in my my casserole dish. So I'm gonna do this with all of them. And then I'll be back. All right, next we're gonna make up our sauce. For this, I want about six tablespoons of soy sauce. Then I'm gonna do three tablespoons of fish sauce. Now I could double the sauce recipe because I doubled the um, the meatballs, and I might need to. We'll see. One teaspoon of rice vinegar. One tablespoon of sugar. And we're just going to stir this up. Optional would be some sriracha or some hot sauce. But I'm going to let people just add that as they want it because some of my family is not big on that. And then I'm just going to pour this over top of the meatballs and let them cook. I'm going to try and see how that goes because some of them have a lot more sugar than others. The less sugar doesn't dissolve very good. All right, I'm gonna pop this in the oven and let this cook. And, oh, I almost forgot. I'm gonna sprinkle a few green onions on now just for the flavor, and then I'll sprinkle a few green onions on when it's done, along with some sesame seeds. So then I'm gonna bake this until it's done. All right, so here are the meatballs all done. I'll get Charles to do a taste test. So tonight we're eating, well, we're not eating right now, but I'm gonna have Charles make a taste test. I needed to do dinner early today, so it's actually only two o'clock, but we're not gonna be home until it's time to eat. So I wanted dinner ready. I'm getting ready to run out the door again. And so having dinner ready and prepared just kind of keeps us on, you know, eating at home and not grabbing something on the go. So I will just make some green beans or asparagus. I have both already cleaned, washed, and in the fridge ready to go. So I'll make one of those to go with dinner tonight. But for right now, I'm just gonna have Charles do a taste test for you guys, and then I wanna wrap it up so I can get this edited and up for you guys. All right, so here is his plate. As you guys can see, I've already tried it. I think it's delicious. All right, here he goes. See what you think of them, because I gotta run out the door. <laughs> Am I allowed to say this would be really good in a tortilla wrap like I did the other two? Things? No, no, this would not be good in a tortilla no, wrap. All you ate was that rice. You're trying the meatballs. You're not the flavor of the sauce separate. <laughs> People know what rice tastes like. Not with the sauce from the meatballs on it, they are really soft meatballs. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I think they're delicious. It's a pity you gave me all of them and there's none left for these kids over here. I know, they're all waiting. They want to grab at them. <laughs> and it's supposed to be for dinner. <laughs> wow. Those are like eating something really soft and fluffy. Mm-hmm. They're really good. I have to check and make sure they're cooked all the way through. They are. So I checked the temperature with the, with the thermometer like I always do. That's really good. Mm-hmm. It'd be really good in a tortilla. No, it would not. <laughs> Do not listen to him. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. I'm going to get this video up for you guys. And up, oh, there's a brook. We'll see you uh, tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for watching.